Hello, this is Dane Wigginton with geoengineeringwatch.org. A historical issue of Popular Science Magazine from June of 1958 featured an article with the following headline, quote, weather as a weapon. Geoengineeringwatch.org recently acquired two original copies of this magazine issue, both in excellent condition. What does the magazine article reveal? that the use of weather weapons was always on the agenda of the power structure, and more importantly, that almost 60 years ago, there was a much more open dialogue about this fact. Such dialogue has long since been silenced and is now delegated to the realm of conspiracy theory by the same media sources that trumpeted the quote weather as a weapon reality almost 60 years ago. Everything described in the popular science expose is happening around the world and has been for over six decades, perhaps for over a full decade before the magazine article in question was even printed. Why should this be a surprise? Was the popular science article a test to determine public response at that time? Was that response understandably very negative? Is that why the whole subject of climate engineering has long since been spun by all sources of mainstream media as nothing more than a science fiction proposal? which flies in the face of the mountain of data that confirms beyond any doubt that climate engineering has long since been a reality, longer than most of us have been alive. The Popular Science article states that climate engineering would be, quote, a power more menacing than the H-bomb, the hydrogen bomb. Of course, this is true, as countries can be and have been pounded into the ground without ever even knowing they're at war. The U.S. military has been very busy destabilizing and occupying countries that have been assaulted with all forms of covertly created climate cataclysms. Occupations often begin under the, quote, humanitarian pretext, but the military never leaves once allowed to enter. That's why U.S. boots and bases are in over 150 countries around the globe. The Popular Science article absolutely admits that Air Force scientists are already experimenting with, quote, jet planes to intercept solar radiation, end quote. What is this describing exactly? It's describing solar radiation management almost 60 years ago. Popular Science further states that, quote, methods of weather control would regulate the distribution of heat in different parts of the Earth's atmosphere. This is the basis of global weather modification, end quote. Again, this is from 1958. Yet today, government officials and the corporate media they control do everything in their power to make a mockery of anyone that dares to tell the truth on this critical issue. That solar radiation management and other forms of geoengineering and weather warfare, which is also biological warfare, has been going on for seven decades or more. Further, the Popular Science article admits to this, that, quote, in five decades, which is the five decades prior to 1958, the greenhouse effect has raised Earth's temperature by two degrees Fahrenheit, end quote, from popular science acknowledging that temperature rise in 1958. We are all being told that we are just now reaching this milestone of temperature rise. How much have we been lied to about the true state of the climate? Temperature records reveal very significant escalations of global temperatures that peaked in 1945 and then mysteriously declined right after geoengineering was ramped up after World War II. Is this just a coincidence? No. The temperatures statistically stayed down for almost 30 years. By the early 70s, many of the climate scientists were baffled at the drop in temperatures, which seemed to fly in the face of available science and the laws of physics. These scientists did not know that global geoengineering had been deployed decades earlier, most heavily in the polar regions, at least initially. By the mid-70s, the growing consequences of climate engineering were taking their toll on the planet, along with the rapid buildup of greenhouse gases like CO2 and methane. The warming continued where it had left off decades earlier. In spite of the atmospheric spraying, and in many ways, 
because of the continued SRM programs. What was the response of the climate engineers to double down on the climate engineering SRM insanity and weather warfare? Again and again and again, they ramped these programs up. No matter how much overall devastation they caused to the planet and all life forms, the weather warfare continues to be escalated. The Popular Science article then admits that with the use of certain chemicals that, quote, spread in large enough amounts could produce changes in rainfall either to flood certain parts of Earth or to turn them into deserts, end quote. How telling is that? It's exactly what we see happening around the globe, in addition to engineered snowstorms, which we now have as well. So the final statement in the 1958 article from Popular Science is this, that, quote, we cannot trust to luck that we will be the first to control the weather, end quote. Typical, fearful, military, industrial response, we have to kill them before they kill us mentality. That's what we face. That's what's running the world. Climate engineering has been a reality for seven decades. Massive congressional documents as long as 750 pages prove this fact. Those who deny the climate engineering reality are in one of three categories. They're either completely ignorant of the climate engineering issue, or they're totally in denial, or they are lying, period. And we know this is the case with so many within the climate science community and the media, government, quote unquote, elected officials. They are simply lying. Help us to bring the climate engineering insanity to the full light of day, once and for all. Wake those around you with credible data. Make your voice heard while there is yet time to salvage what's left of the planet's life support systems. This is Dane Wigington with geoengineeringwatch.org.